Pastor Keith Moore. I give you authority. Lesson 3. Who has authority? Turn with me to the book of Luke as we said. The book of Luke, the fourth chapter. Again, we encourage everyone to come out and join us uh, in the week of increase every evening at uh, 7.30 here, Florida time. And uh, believe with us, I'm, I'm very excited. I, I spent some extra time seeking the Lord this week and uh, I got some answers. Got some things that I'm excited about it. I just know that I know that some people are going to get free. They're going to get some answers that the, and some very serious situations that some people have been struggling with for years and they're going to get free. I just know it. Hallelujah. So, so believe, pray, pray with us during the day. You get a few minutes, get off to yourself. Pray in the Spirit some about the service. And, and come and show up and bring faith with you. And, and believe God. We'll be connected. There's no distance in the Spirit. Right? And then, you know, come February, we're going to have our Greater Faith Conference here. Branson will be joining us live. It'll be turned around just like that. And it's, it's uh, great that we can do it. In Luke 4... And uh, 31, <clears throat> Luke 4 and 31, the Bible said uh, they came down to Capernaum, a uh, city of Galilee. And Jesus taught them on the Sabbath days, and they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with power. Now, I don't know what translation you're reading, but a lot of translations here instead will say authority. And I, I like the, that translation better. The word power and authority are not translated consistently in the King James. The same word that's translated power sometimes is translated authority. Sometimes it's, it's, you know, it, well, it's not consistent. And, uh, but it's because of the English language. We use the word power to describe both power and authority. Somebody says, do you have the power to do that? And then what are they talking about? They're talking about authority or right or influence. Or if somebody says, do you have the power to do it? It could also mean, do you have the ability? Do you have the resources to do it? And so both of these elements are referred to repeatedly in the scriptures, authority and power. Say it out loud, authority, authority. and power. <clears throat> they were amazed and astonished at Jesus when he spoke because they said his word is with authority. And in the synagogue there was a man that had a spirit of an unclean devil, or the, that's the word for demon, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, Let us alone. What have we to do with you? You Jesus of Nazareth, are you come to destroy us? I know you who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold your peace and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and heard him not. And they were all amazed and spoke among, them saying, among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. Somebody say, uh, with authority, with authority. And, power. and power. Did Jesus walk in authority yes. and power? Yes. He did. But in Luke 9, just a couple of chapters over, we see he delegated this authority and power. In Luke 9 and 1, Luke 9, 1, he called his 12 disciples together. And what did he do? He gave them what? Both. Power and authority. Now, 
the two main words, I don't always get this technical about things, but this is so important, I want to talk just a little bit about it. <clears throat> there are two different words, two different Greek words used for this, and they're not translated consistently in the King James, so it can be a little confusing. And it's a good study if you want to look into it. But the word for power is the, uh, the, the Greek word dunamis, and it's the word that means force. It means, it's oftentimes translated miracle or miraculous. It is divine force. It is miracle working power. And it's a, it's a good study if you want to look into it. It's the same power that caused Jesus to be conceived in Mary. It's the same power that holds the heavens together. It's the sa- I'm talking about the same word is used in the scripture. It's the same power that Jesus is coming back in. Whoo! Oh. <laughs> Glory. That was worth you come, combing your hair and coming out to church right, right, right there, right? This power, this force, this ability, this miracle working power. Now the word for authority that oftentimes in the King James is also just translated power. But it's a different word. It's the word exousia in the Greek. And it means privilege. It means delegated influence. It means jurisdiction control, delegated influence, jurisdiction, and or control. So you can sum it up in this. The word power, you could say might. The word authority, you could say right. The right to do it and the might to do it. You know, uh, a policeman needs authority and power, right? They need to, to, to do a job to enforce the law with lawbreakers and people uh, who would do terrible things if there weren't somebody to stop them. They have the uniform. They have the badge. They have the patch. And all of this is saying what? They have the marked car in some cases. What is that saying? Or right. They have a right to pull you over and talk to you about running 100 miles an hour. Right? They have a right. Hmm? They have been authorized, haven't they? By the controlling authorities of the city, the, the, the county, the state, whatever. But also... It doesn't hurt if you got 220 pounds of muscle under that uniform, right? And you got a nine millimeter Glock, right? Or you got a shotgun in the back, right? What is that? Might. Do you have to have the might to support the right? If there was no might, outlaws would ignore your right. Well, what did Jesus give them? He gave them the right and the might. Oh, is anybody awake in here today? <clears throat> what did he give them? He gave them the right. He gave them the authority. And he gave them the might, the power, the miracle working power to enforce the authority. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody know where we're going with this? <clears throat> Got some kind of an idea. Just hold on if you don't. He gave them. Are you looking at Luke 9, 1? What did Jesus do? What did he do? I want you to focus on those words right there. He called his 12 disciples together. And what did he do? He gave them. Said out loud, he gave them. them. Said again, he gave them. them. 
He did what? He gave them. And after he gave it to them, did they have it? Yes. Yeah. Why did they have it? He gave it to them. He gave them what? Power, dunamis, miracle working power. And he gave them exousia, authority, the right to use the power, the right to have an influence and exert influence. To do what? Over all, A-L-L, it says devils, but the word is demons. There's one devil, many demons. Over all demons, all evil spirits. How, how many does all mean? <clears throat> I know a friend of mine years ago, was very studious. He said he looked up this word all. He did an extensive etymological study. <laughs> he, he researched the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic and the Latin and the Chaldean for days. And he said his conclusion was that this word A-L-L in the English, what it really means is all. all. <laughs> it, it really does mean all. <laughs> it means all. They had power and authority over a L L every evil spirit, every demon, and and to cure diseases. In fact, if you look at Matthew's account, it uses the word every sickness and every disease. And all would mean every wrong spirit. Said out loud, he gave them power and authority. Over every evil spirit, over every disease. So what they do? Then he sent them out. He said, "Do something with that." Didn't he? He sent them out. Go. Send them out two and two. Go. And uh, skip down to chapter ten. <coughs> Just right there, close by. After these things, the Lord, uh, verse 1, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place where he himself would come. So Jesus obviously did not intend that he's the only one that can operate in authority and power. Because now he has delegated influence and power to the twelve. And he has delegated influence and power to an additional 70. Now there's 83. Am I saying it right? 70 and 12 is 82. Is that right? Plus Jesus. There's 83 empowered, authorized ones that are taking authority over evil spirits and diseases. Jesus obviously did not intend that he's the only one that can, can operate like this. Because the 12 did, and the 70 did, and I'll give you a little preview, and that's not the end. The 83 is not the end. If you skip down in the 10th chapter, after he authorized the 70, verse 17, Luke 10, 17. The 70 then, after being sent out, because they were authorized and empowered, they came with joy. Now here is one of the, the telltale indicators that you know that you've been authorized and empowered. It makes you happy. I said it makes you happy. Did you know that? It, it thrills you. It, it rejoices your heart when you find out, I don't have to be dominated. I don't have to be ruled over by all this stuff, by these evil influences, by every disease and every problem. 
I don't have to let it dominate me. I don't have to let it control my life. I can tell it to get out. I can tell it to stop. And it has to listen. It has to obey. And that makes you very happy. Put, put up on the screen Proverbs 29 2. talks about this. Proverbs 29 2 says, When the righteous are in authority, what happens? The people rejoice. You show me a stiff, sad church that pay, only plays slow, sad music, only sings slow, sad songs, only hears slow, sad messages. These are people who don't know who they are and don't know that they've been authorized and don't know that they've been empowered. Hmm? Because when you find out, I said, when you find out, you get happy. You begin to rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. This continual mourning and grieving and sadness and depression reveals that the evil one and his, and his wicked minions are dominating the people of God. And it ought not be that defeated Fallen spirits dominate blood-bought, redeemed, authorized in Jesus' name, Holy Spirit-empowered, children of God. You talk about what's wrong with this picture? A little defeated imp dominating a born-again child of God? It's only through deception and darkness and ignorance that this is possible. And I'm telling you, one of the biggest things the devil does not want you to know is that you have been authorized and you have been empowered. He will fight this with everything that's in him. He will all, he doesn't like messages like this one today. No, because he wants to dominate people of God. He wants you to be caught up in this false humility. And just let him run over you and wreak havoc in your life. And you just go, well, whatever the Lord wants. And he goes, that's right. Just take it. It's just up to the Lord, whatever the Lord. That's not true. That's not true. It's religious, it's widespread, but it's not true. And the enemy is just holding high carnival in the lives of millions of believers because they don't know who they are, they don't know what they have, they don't know what they can do. But how about, let's, how about us changing that? How about us, first of all, getting it in us and then sending it across the world? It's already happening but we can do our part too. We can add to it. What happens when the righteous are in authority? People rejoice. What about this 70? When they realized they had been authorized and empowered. Go back, go back and look at it again. Luke 10. <coughs> Luke 10 and 17 I guess it was. <coughs> Excuse me. Luke 10 and 17, what happened? They returned again with what? Joy. 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 The joy of the Lord is strength. No such thing as being a strong, depressed Christian. I'm sorry, it's just not. If you really are strong, you're not depressed. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And the 70 returned again with joy. Why were they so full of joy? They said, Lord, 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 even the demons are subject to us through your name. We tell them to get, and they get, just like when you tell them to get. 
Woo! We've been authorized and empowered. We got the right. We got the might. <clears throat> divine right and divine might. Am I just a carrying on or is this true? Is this in the Bible? Is this right? Oh, friends, real Christianity is not this formal, dead, dry thing that so many people go through the motions of. Real, Christ, real living Christianity is the most exciting thing on the planet. It is the most powerful, most empowering, most liberating. A fella could preach it here today. Do you believe it? Real Christianity. Whew. And when the world sees it, they'll want it. The goodness of God, the goodness of the Lord draws people to him. When they really see what it is, it's no wonder some people have stayed out of church because they got relatives who claim to be Christians. And they're dead and dry and defeated and depressed. And they think, well, man, being a Christian is being like Uncle Charlie. Forget it. You know, I don't need that. But it doesn't have to be like that for them or Uncle Charlie, either one. We need to all come into the fullness of our inheritance and the freedom, our liberty in Christ Jesus. He said the 70 returned again with joy and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning. He said, I saw it. Anybody know about lightning? Sure you do. Down here in Florida? Huh? How does lightning come? Wow. Right? Wow. It's a flash and boom, it's there. The devil got bounced out of heaven. Boom. Somebody say, boom, boom. That's what happened to the devil. He got up in God's face. Bad idea. But how many think bad, bad idea? He got up in God. He did. He's a created being. He's not some kind of evil, equal opposite to God. He was, he's a created being. He's an angel. Brilliant, amazing. But he watched God operate by releasing faith words and creating. And he decides he's going to use this against God. Somebody say bad idea. Bad idea. He said, I will exalt my throne. I will ascend. I will be like the most. What's he trying to do? He's trying to use his faith. He wouldn't even know there was such a thing except for God. And the Lord said, you will be brought to the sides of the pit. You, how many know when your words hit God's words? When the dust clears? His words are standing. Yes. Yours are not. And, and Jesus said, I saw, boom, just like lightning, out of the sky. Satan has been cast down. Yes. He ain't what he used to be. Yes. He is defeated. He is stripped. He's been brought to naught. And you, on the other hand, ain't what you used to be either. Yes. You have been authorized. I want somebody to say, I, I've been authorized. Yes. Say it again, I have been, I have been. <coughs> authorized. <coughs> Verse 19, Jesus said this. Notice these words. Behold, I give unto you. I give to you. I give to you. I, Jesus said, I give to you. Somebody said, well, that's just for the 12. No, he's talking to the 70. Well, it's just for this. It's just for that. Watch about this. You know, a lot of folks, every time something good comes up, oh, that's just for the Jews. Oh, that's just for Jesus. Oh, that's just for... No. Jesus did not need everything for himself. He had everything. He did not need redemption. He did not need a place of authority and power. Come on, are you listening? Everything he did, he did... For us, 
He got it for you. He got it for me. He got it for his body. Hmm? Without taking the time to go into it, you know Ephesians and other places, Philippians talk about, he is the head. We are the body. Now, do you separate what your head has from what your body has? <clears throat> hmm? You say, I have a right to live, my head has a right to live in this house, but not my body. <clears throat> my head has a right to run this office, but not my feet. Hmm? My head has a right to drive this car, but not my arms. Huh? Your head, anybody, anybody clear on this? Check. Your head is directly connected to your body and your body, your head goes nowhere without your body. Right? I want you to say it out loud. This is a great revelation. If my head has it, my body has it. Say it again. If the head has it, the body has it. True or not? True or not? Name one thing that you say, my head has it, but my body don't. No. Your head and your body are connected. Jesus is the head of the church. We. 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 Are the body. People have tried to separate the head from the body and say the head has it, but the body doesn't. Doesn't work. Some folks are going to have to meditate on that one a little while. <clears throat> Don't take my word for it. Search the scriptures out diligently. Luke's, Luke 10 19, Jesus said, Behold, I give you power. I give you, that's the word for authority. I give you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Do you have to be afraid of any evil spirit or any demon or any disease? Jesus said it can't, it can't hurt you. You've been authorized. You've been empowered. <clears throat> Somebody say thank you Lord. Go with me, please, to the book of Matthew 21. Boy, I'd have come and just preached this to myself this morning. But I'm sure glad you came too. Matthew 21, 21. Jesus, uh, in back in verse uh, 12, Matthew 21, 12, he came into the temple and cast out the people that were selling and buying and overthrew the tables of the money chambers, money changers, and, and the seats of them that sold doves. He kicked them out of there, and he said some things to them. And down in verse 23, when he was come to the temple... The chief priests and elders of the people came to him as he was teaching. And I guess they interrupted him while he was teaching. And they said, what do they want to say? And no. By what authority do you, doest thou these things? Who gave you this authority? What do they want to know? What are they questioning? He just went in and cleaned out the temple. What are they saying? Who gave you the right? None of us did. You didn't consult with the, the Pharisees. You didn't consult with the Sadducees. You didn't consult with the Sanhedrin. You didn't consult with the, the rulers and the elders. What gives you the right to come in here? Now, I want you to back up and notice <clears throat> in that uh, 12th verse, he cast out the people doing those things, <clears throat> all the livestock, 
Can you imagine a bunch of livestock in here this morning? How smelly, how interrupting. No. But I want you to notice something else. You know, this, this building, and nor any building, is the temple of God. We are the temple of God. And notice what he did connected with this. He ran out the nasty, smelly things that shouldn't have been in the physical temple. And verse 14, and the blind and lame came to him in the temple and what? He ran out the blindness and the lameness and cleaned the temple. Disease, disease is defilement. It's not a blessing in disguise or otherwise. Anything that deforms and destroys the, the beautiful creation of God is not an improvement. It's not a blessing. Anything that defiles and, and makes weak and distorts and, and destroys organs and nerves and blood cells and joints it's something that needs to be driven out. Yes. Doesn't it? Yes. Driven out yes. of the temple. Yes. Hmm? Yes. You'd feel very strongly about somebody coming in here and defiling your church that the Lord gave you. Yes. And, and destroying the seats and the carpet and destroying and putting nasty stuff and garbage and filth. I mean, you'd have strong feelings about that. Yes. <clears throat> and yet that's not even the temple of God. But your body is. I said your body is. And our body is. All of us together. We are the temple. And he wants the temple clean. Sin free. Depression free. Fear free. Cancer free. Disease free. Come on. If not. Why would he do this? How many have read enough of the gospel accounts to know he, Jesus, did a lot of this? Yes. One of, he, he was much of the time ministering healing and deliverance to people, yes. wasn't he? Getting them cleaned up, yes. getting them free, yes. right? Yes. Defilement and contamination and destruction is never the will of God. Never the will of God. Now don't feel bad if you got some stuff that you know is not the perfect will of God. Just don't lay down and accept it and say, well, this is it. No, begin to find out, I can do something about this. I can speak against, I can say something to this. See, the problem has been from, from the days of old. Is God getting his people to believe they have been authorized? Getting his people to believe they have been empowered that they can do something about it. Because most of the church that throws up their hands and go, well, it's, it's, he's got the power. It's up to him. I mean, he's got the authority. He's got the power. And he does. But the truth that has not been realized by many, he has delegated his authority to the 12, to the 70, to the church. Yes. Are you a part of the church? Yes. <laughs> oh, somebody's getting happy. Somebody's, somebody's getting scared. But you'll notice these things that the uh, rulers of the synagogue said. Why are they recorded? Because they are yielding to the enemy. The enemy is actually speaking through them. And the Lord wants us to recognize this. What is the devil saying through them? Who do you think you are? Who, who gave you authority? You can't speak like this. You can't command. You don't have any right. Why? Oh, the devil doesn't want you to find out. Oh, he will lie. He will do everything he can do to malign these kind of messages. Everything he, why? He'll say, who do you think you are? You're a worm. You're just an old sinner. Maybe saved by grace. You, you got no power. You're not Jesus. Who do you think you are? You can't say anything. You can't do it. Shut up and sit down. Shut up. Go to the house and be quiet. Just bear your cross. 
It's not your cross. Just, you know, take it like a man. No. No. Who do you think you are? By what authority? By what authority? He's still saying this today. I want you to skip to the end of the book in Matthew. And get ready to shout. You ought to be primed already. You ought to be. By now, you ought to be ready to shout. (coughs) End of the book. Jesus has gone to the cross. Jesus has been raised from the dead. Mm. And Revelation tells us that he got the keys. Didn't he? He got the keys of death, hell, the grave. Someone say he got them. He got them. How many believe he got them? He got them. And right here at the very end of the book, Verse 17, they saw Jesus. He has been gloriously raised from the dead. When they saw him, they worshiped him. But some doubted. Did you know you can doubt no matter what you see, what you're in the middle of? They are in the presence of the risen Christ. And they're going, I don't know about this. (laughs) Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All power is given unto me. In heaven and in earth. That's the word for authority. Exousia. Say it out loud. All authority. authority. In heaven and earth. earth. Is given unto me. me. Jesus said that. Right? Is it true? Does he have it? Did he get it? So he has it. And folks would stop right there and they'd go, well, yeah, yeah, Jesus has it. Jesus has it, but I don't. Read the next verse. Read the next verse. What does it say? Go. What else? Ye. Therefore. Therefore what? Therefore what? Therefore connects you to the previous verse. You could say like this, because of. Because I have all authority in heaven and earth, you go. Because I have it, you go. You go and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and Son and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things, whatever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Go to Mark. Read Mark's account of this same thing. 16, last chapter of Mark. Because I have all authority, I'm telling you to go and do this. Is that not an authorization? This is where the, this is where the link has been severed and broken. This is where folks have, have not realized. Oh, he has it. I mean, you can get Christians all over the world to agree with you on this. He has the authority and power. And so so you say, so then you got it. They go, well, no. I'm not Jesus. He's got it, but not me. So the head's got it, but the body doesn't. We're back to this. What is an authorization? When the Lord tells you to go and do something, what is that? It's an authorization. Is he going to tell you to go do something, but you don't have the right to do it? And you don't have the might to do it? Did he tell us, resist the devil and he'll flee from you? But you don't have the right to do it. And you don't have the might to do it. Hmm? You must have the authority and power to do it if he told you to do it. No, we're not getting this. 
when he told you to do it, he authorized you Amen. to do it. Yeah. Somebody said out loud, when he told us to do it, to that, do it. that was an authorization. <clears throat> I've got several employees and helpers that are under us in the ministry. I'm the overseer, me and Phyllis. But if I tell one of the guys, one of the ladies, go over to such and such place and tell them I sent you and do this or get this. And if they look at me and go, well, this is not my ministry, Brother Key. <laughs> this is not, you know, I'm not the overseer of this ministry. I said, I know, I am. And I'm telling you, yes. go do this. Yes. Well, I, I can't, Brother Keith. I'm not, I, I, this is not my ministry. And so what if I went to the next one and said, okay, how about you? Go over there and do such and such and, and, and tell them I sent you. And tell them that I'm, I'm, I'm authorizing you to do this. I give you the, the power to do it. And they look at me and they cried and said, I'm not over the ministry. This is not my, I'm not the head of this ministry. I, uh, this is not my ministry. I said, I know it. But I told you. Yeah. Oh, but I'm not you and I can't do it. I said, well, who else is around? How about you? What if I couldn't get anybody to take heed and respond to my authorization and empower? Then even though I'm the head, I can't get anything done. In my own ministry and church, because nobody will respond to me. This is the situation of the church in the earth. There's nothing wrong with our head, and He's got all the authority, and He's got all the power, and because He does, He said, You go. Do this, do that. When he said it, we were authorized. Yes. When he said it, we were empowered. Yes. Oh, come on. Do you see any of this or not? <clears throat> Woo, verse 14, Mark 16, 14. He appeared to the 11 and he upbraided them because of their unbelief and hardness of heart. And he said to them, verse 15, he did what? He said to them, I've got it. I've got it. And I'm going to take care of it. Y'all can just go to the house. I've got it. I got the power. I got the authority. And y'all don't have to do a thing. You don't have it, so don't try this at home. But I, but I got it. And I'm going to do it. And you just go sit down and sing Kumbaya. Whatever will be, will be. No. Come on, come on, think about it, saints. Everybody awake, are y'all listening? Yes. Jesus went to the cross. He went to the heart of the earth. He overcame the devil, death, sin, the grave. He was raised from the dead. With the keys. He said, I've got it. I've got it. Adam lost it, but I got it. I got it back and then some. I got it. And then immediately he left. Didn't he? He's got all authority in heaven and earth, but immediately he left the earth. Didn't he? He left. His spirit's here. He's here by the presence of his spirit. But he's, he's not here. He's at the right hand of the Father. Yes. But not before telling us. Yes. What? What did he tell us? What did he tell us? Go. You go into all the world. Now you don't have authority, but you go. <laughs> what? I'm not going to give you any ability to do it either, but you go. And just muddle along best you can. No, no. 
the command is an authorization. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that believes not will be damned. And these signs will follow those that are believing and doing that. In my name, they'll cast out demons. How are you going to do that and you don't have any authority? Don't have any power. They'll speak with new tongues. It goes on to say, they'll lay hands on the sick. They'll recover. This sounds like what he told the 12. This sounds like what he told the 70. It's the same thing. It's authority. It's power. Over every evil disease. Over every sickness. And the challenge has been getting us to believe it. Because too many Christians look up and go, Ho, ho, me? I'm nobody. I'm nothing. Now Jesus, he's everything. He's got the power. He's got the power. But no, not me. Who, and of course the devil, you, you even begin to think like this. He'll do like those Pharisees. He'll jump on you and go, who do you think you are? You can't talk like this. You're not Jesus. Who do you? You shut up and sit down. You little pipsqueak. You're, you're nothing. You little miserable sinner. You know how bad you've messed up. And if he can keep you in sin and condemnation and sin consciousness and you don't know who you are, he can just rule and reign in your life and destroy and do whatever he wants. And you just go, well, whatever the Lord wants, whatever the Lord, and think you're being humble. And it's got nothing to do with true humility. I want somebody in here to say real loud, I, I have, been have been authorized. I, I have been empowered. empowered. Glory, to Woo, glory to God. This is the authorization of all believers. Are you a believer? Yes. He said, he that believes on me, Jesus said in John 14, the works that I do, he will do also. How can you do what he did and you're not authorized? Amen. And you're not empowered. The 12 did what he did. Why? He delegated. His authority and power. The 70 did what he was doing. Why? He delegated to them. And now he tells the whole church. The whole church. When he says you go and you do this. And you'll cast out evil spirits. And you'll lay hands on the sick. And they'll recover. Why? Not because you're so much in yourself personally. But you have been authorized. You have been empowered. By the head of the church. You got a right to say shut up and get out of here to every evil spirit. You got a right to say get out of my body. Get out of my child fever. Get off of my family. Get out of here. You got a right. Every evil influence. We're not supposed to lay down and just let it happen. We're supposed to stand up and resist it. In the name of Jesus, he said it'll flee from you. When he said, go and do it, I've got the power, now go. That is an authorization. But they lacked something yet. They lacked the empowerment, which is why he said, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And in just a few days, they had not only the authority, they had the power. And so the book of Acts, we see the, 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 the disciples and then the thousands that got saved and then the other thousands that got saved and you begin to see the devil's worst nightmare coming to pass. Not just one Jesus authorized and empowered, not just another 12, not just another 70, but they're popping like popcorn all over the earth getting saved, getting born again, and finding out that they are also a child of God, that they have authority in the name of Jesus, that they are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And when we find this out, we will quit laying down and being destroyed, and we will rise up, and we will rule, and we will reign in this life. In Christ Jesus. Yeah. Whoo. Somebody say no more doormat for the devil. 
Go to Ephesians in closing, I think. <laughs> Ephesians. <clears throat> Ephesians, the sixth chapter. There is so much here, isn't there? <clears throat> Tradition won't teach you this, but the Bible will. Yes. Ephesians 6 and 10. I'm reading in the Young's literal translation. Ephesians 6:10. He said, To the rest, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. If you have any. Huh? How's he going to tell you be strong in the power of his might and he never gave you any? Did he give us any power? Yes. Did he give us any might? Is Ephesians written to the New Testament church? Is, can we accept this for ourselves? Be strong. Somebody say strong, strong, strong. In the Lord and in the power of his might. This is that same word dunamis. Explosive, miracle working power. Be, be strong in that. How can you? Because you've been given it. Verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God for your being able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Can you? Can you? Can you stand no matter what? Verse 12. We've not been wrestling with blood and flesh but with principalities and authorities and world rulers of the darkness of this age and spiritual things of the evil in the heavenly places, evil influences. Because of this, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to resist in the day of the evil and all things having done to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt, and he talks about with the, the, the armor of God and the things that we've been given in Christ, but if you are able, we'll let you stop right here. If he tells you to resist, that alone is an authorization. Hmm? If he says, go here, do that. You stand up against the devil. What does that mean? You ought, to, you ought to start hollering hallelujah right then. If the Lord says, you do something about that and you go, whoo, that means I can. Why? Because he just told me to. What gives you a right? He told me. He told me to do it. If he told me to do it, that means I'm authorized to do it. Who do you think you are? I'm whoever he says I am. <laughs> what gives you the right? Him. He told me. Right? Right? What gives you the right? He, do he does. He gave me the right. He gave you the right. He gave us power. And authority over every evil spirit, over every disease. I know some people say, that sounds nice. I wish that were true. Well, it's not for you. You won't enjoy it because you don't believe it. But the one you're making fun of that's making a lot of noise beside you, they'll see some results because they believe it. How can you tell you believe it? When the righteous are in authority, people rejoice. When you find out, I don't have to take this laying down anymore. I don't have to live like this. I don't have to. I don't have to be sick all my life. I don't have to be broke all my life. I don't have to be depressed and defeated. I don't have to. I've been authorized. I've been empowered. Whew. Woo, glory to God. Stand on your feet, everybody, before I start preaching again. We hope you enjoyed this message from Pastor Keith Moore from Faith Life Church in Branson, Missouri. We're working on getting this lesson formatted and ready for translation into many languages. One of our goals is to curate and duplicate the best teaching in the world. There are millions of sermons and lessons online, and many that are great, but not effectively managed. Most of the time, they are disorganized and unfiltered. It is very confusing for a new believer to find in-depth quality teaching that will lay a strong faith foundation. Visit faithtrainers.com forward slash Eagle Team to learn more. 
Grow fast. Grow strong. Glorify God.